The uh, regular meeting of the village of Armada will now come to order September 27th. Will everyone rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you kindly. Clark, Paul, roll please. Shaw. Here. Clark is absent. Conan. Here. Wallach. Here. Taylor. Here. Sleds. Here. Belke. Here. Uh, next is the approval of the, of the agenda. What, what is the council's wishes, please? <laughs> Mr. President, I'd like to move the agenda be accepted as presented. Support. Been moved and supported by Dollar and Shaw. <coughs> Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I have motion carried. At this time, the floor is opened up for citizen comments. You have three minutes to state uh, what you would like to address the council with and state your name for the record, please. Who's ever first, please? No. <coughs> All right. Good. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, one presentation tonight from Kathy Dickens from the Four County Foundation. You're Kathy, I think? I am. If you'd like to stand and... Sure. Yeah. Kathy, if I can, real quick, I'm going to just get the lead in. So, uh, since I've asked Kathy to come. So, uh, recent tornado and other adverse weather events, as bad as they were, for the community, actually encountered <coughs> something good and positive. Uh, neighbors came out and helped neighbors. The village and the township coordinated and worked together. Surrounding communities pitched in. First responders, uh, utility and cleanup crews couldn't say enough things about how supportive and welcoming the Armada community was. The tornado uncovered community spirit that I personally, I personally haven't had the fortune to see in the 28 years that I've lived here. We perhaps have an opportunity to capture and bottle some of that spirit, so it's always present. Uh, through, the, through a community visioning initiative called Heart and Soul. In other words, what's truly important to the heart and soul of the community. Hopefully you've read the material that we put into the packet for the meeting tonight. Um, and I invited uh, Kathy, I've had some conversations with Kathy and a couple other folks. I've invited Kathy, Executive Director of Fort County Community Foundation to uh, talk to us uh, about the initiative. And Kathy and I intend to uh, talk with the township uh, board also about the initiative uh, at their meeting on the 5th of October. Kathy? Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for entertaining me for just a few minutes. Um, as Ross had mentioned, uh, I had knocked on his door really about this pro uh, program called Community Heart and Soul. It uh, originated in Vermont, I believe, from the Orton Family Foundation. And uh, basically, it's an opportunity or a program where small towns uh, or small municipalities um, have a series of listening tours. Could be potluck dinners, could be picnics, could be any uh, you know uh, events that would bring people together in kind of a, a fellowship, if you will, and uh, basically explore what community members um, love about the community, what they're proud about. Um, and at the same time, probably you would elicit some, boy, if we could do anything, I just wish. You know, I wish this, I wish that. Um, and then from all of that data, the, these uh, potlucks, these picnics, whatever it is that you come up with, are all, uh, you know, your own ideas. They're nothing prefabricated. And the place at which they're hosted also would be entirely up to you. But the uh, objective is to gain uh, voices and to gain opinions of people that you might not otherwise hear from, people that otherwise don't travel to township hall meetings or get involved in uh, municipal uh, work, um, people at Brinkley who might not come to, to town very often. So uh, I had this opportunity brought to my attention through the Council of Michigan Foundations, which is kind of the umbrella organization for all community foundations and private foundations. 
uh, in the state of Michigan. And they said that there was a, a seed grant available, which is basically $10,000 towards this project on behalf of Orton Family Foundation. Well, I certainly don't have any promise to you right now, but I brought this up to my proactive committee at Four County Community Foundation. Uh, that committee is tasked with finding things in the community that would benefit the community that might not be brought to our door by a school or by a nonprofit. And I, I just mentioned this to them, and they said, that sounds like a phenomenal idea. Do some more uh, background uh, research on it. And so I did. Um, actually, I connected with an executive director of another community foundation in the Finley, Ohio area. Uh, demographics not too different from here. And uh, they did their first uh, town um, three years ago and loved the response that they got and the connectivity among everybody in the community. They loved it so much that they funded a second one and their plan is to go through every town in the community foundation uh, service area. And so I would love to pilot it in a place and see how it works and how many people can come forward and, and uh, you know voice the love of community, voice uh, interests and what would further develop the community and uh, again, harvest or harness some of those voices that you don't typically hear from. Um, I, I find that myself in doing surveys. Uh, you do an online survey and you've lost a lot of you know, constituents because they, they, they don't <coughs> have connectivity or they don't have a device. You know, there's just, uh, there's nothing like face-to-face -face conversation. And um, so that's what this is. And basically it's a year and a half, sometimes it sprawls into two years, where again, it's not every week, it's not you know crazy speed, it's once a month, once every other month, or whatever's comfortable, picking a site, having an event, and uh, people would be there who would be trained, essentially, to listen and uh, take notes and harvest those notes and uh, you know collate them in a meaningful fashion. And it, it gains uh, footing, and at the end of the 18 months then there's essentially something will kind of rise to the top that a lot of people had mentioned that uh, you know the the village or the township or whomever is involved um, could actually point to and say hey that's what that's something we should probably be working towards collectively um, it could be uh, it could be you know I'm just throwing ideas out there from different areas oh I should say also Frank and move uh, is in their second year of doing this uh, very thing, and it was uh, I believe their I believe their mayor that uh, may have stepped forward and had heard about this at some uh, conference, and uh, they're enjoying uh, their work with Community Heart and Soul. So I just bring that to you because there's there's uh, you know an opportunity for the and we've already met uh, just tentatively to see what the seed grant was. So I think that's a shoe in because I think they love the area. And then, uh, you know, my um, uh, proactive committee would have some skin in the game as well. So you really think your net investment as far as dollars would be minimal, if any. Um, you'd be kind of supported. But at any rate, I was kind of inspired to come and, and speak just because of what I was seeing online uh, after the tornado and, you know, Armada Strong and everybody coming together. and, and uh, I thought, wow, that's that's a great bunch of energy that you, you know, certainly you hate to have a, a catastrophe happen for that, you know, to, to resonate in the community, but it would be a wonderful opportunity to grab it while it's there and keep working forward in, in a very positive uh, direction. Not that you're not already headed in a positive direction, but this would just kind of um, um, bolster both, both your efforts. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically uh, what I know, and I've met with uh, Bob Donahue, uh, who is a, um, uh, I want to say capturing kids' hearts. That's not it, it's a whole different thing. Um, the heart, heart and soul um, coach, and he lives in Oakland County. So he, he and I have visited several times, very, very wonderful guy who actually had his prior uh, career. He's retired, as am I. It seems like we all retire from one career and then we go into another. Um, <laughs> But his prior career was uh, in uh, local planning and uh, economic development, economic development, and uh, also historic um, redevelopment. 
an historic district. So he's got a lot of knowledge and a lot of uh, past, and uh, he's just a wonderful guy. And so we would likely work with him throughout. So I mean, I'd be happy to take any questions, although in all transparency, I'm certainly not an expert, but I've met with Bob probably four or five times. And uh, just love the project. I think it's great. In, in this world we live in, anything, any project or program that's around positivity is a good one in my book. So uh, the foundation would be pleased to you know, partner with you in it if you do a little research and you're interested or whatever next steps, if there are any. And if there aren't, no, no harm. Uh, no harm, no foul. Just thought I'd bring that opportunity to you. Did I hear you say that there would be ten thousand dollars of seed money possibly for that? Yes, from the um, Horton Family Foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then likely another. Uh, well, I mean, again, I can't promise because I have to leave that up to a committee. But I've already mentioned it to my proactive committee, and they were, they were all in. They were, you know. The foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I think a key facet of it, as I understand, is the as this thing starts, the the effort is really to talk to everybody mm -hmm. in the community, everybody. Not that group or that group mm -hmm. and cherry pick, it's to talk to everybody. And there's, I think we all know that there's lots of components of the, the village or, and or the township that um, just not represented in a lot of things. Well, what's important to them? They're no less important as constituents of ours. So right, um, exactly. it's and a great you know, opportunity. A lot of that is, uh, I think a lot of times people are um, oh, not frightened, but a little intimidated to come into a meeting like this and speak, you know, mm -hmm. if they've never done it before. And so those are the quiet, if not silent voices out there that you would mm -hmm. you would engage because there's nothing intimidating about a picnic, <laughs> you know, and somebody sitting and listening to you one on one. Right. So, so at any rate, uh, yeah, but, I, I agree. But, but those are facilitated yeah. so mm -hmm. by people that are experienced in it Correct. to pull the ideas out of people or yeah. the likes, the dislikes. It's um, something perhaps that you can compare it to is as a master plan um, process where you're pulse on the community to find out what's important to them. Where do they want to go in the next 10, 15, 20, 50 years? So. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> I'll move on to the present administrative report. The treasurer's report is incorporated. Uh, treasurer, <coughs> there, do you have any comments further? No, this okay. one's there. Uh, the committee report. Uh, they are here. So, uh, gentlemen. Uh, you have one thing, Mark. Yep. On the planning commission. Okay. Um, there's not going to be any October meeting. We have no uh, visits coming out. Our um, chairman is very sensitive about having meetings that cost the village money okay. if there's not a stated purpose. So uh, we're not going to have a meeting this month. Or month of October, I should say. Well, you're right. It's next month. Yeah. And it's coming very fast. <laughs> so, huh. Yes, Mr. President, I've got my assorted reports. So I'll take the water report and put it up into the liaison report if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm walking down the list here. Um, just have been in touch with uh, McIntyre Soft Water. McIntyre is the uh, company that we're working with to do the media exchange and the water treatment plant. Uh, they have received our deposit check, which is good news, and uh, I've asked them to expedite. Again, what we're trying to do is get the media manufactured, delivered, and the media exchanged by Christmas. And so at this point, it appears we're on track for that. Uh, next item is uh, we've been discussing the ZBA viability, whether or not we've got the appropriate number of members. Um, that's gone back and forth a little bit. Uh, have talked to Jeff about it. Jeff has introduced me to the uh, Zoning Enabling Act of uh, 2006, which uh, does indicate the fact that uh, for a village of less than 5,000 or a municipality of less than 5,000, you can have three members. Um, uh, we've got essentially at this point, unless we get verification from the uh, two of the members that uh, we were barely meeting the requirement. Um, 
interesting that the uh, Enabling Act also says that you will put in the zoning ordinance the number of members that you're supposed to have. So we're going, the ZBA traditionally goes to the zoning ordinance. That's what we use to evaluate uh, appeals. And, uh, and then there it says five. So that may be something that the Planning Commission could start to work on is clearly that Enabling Act, all 26 or so pages of it, has things that should be put into the zoning ordinance uh, probably sooner rather than later, so they could maybe start to look at those items that should be amended. Um, that notwithstanding, uh, we, uh, I have talked to the other two members uh, that are iffy. Uh, both of them appear to be willing to continue to serve for a short period of time at least, because um, I would not encourage just three members. Uh, some of the issues we talked uh, we talk about uh, for an appeal um, are fairly weighty issues and the more people that you can have as part of that process and making decisions the better. Um, so no, maybe we want to have just three people making a decision and you get a potential split. It's a two to one uh, vote. <laughs> Some of these issues as I say are fairly uh, uh, complicated and could uh, 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 have ramifications for the village. So more people on the Zoning Board of Appeals is better. But it appears that we've got five now, so as the council liaison, I was the secretary, because we do not have an active chair, I'm gonna call a meeting for later on this month, try to get everybody back together, do officer elections. Um, we've got one member that's indicated he's uh, interested in doing that, and then he can take over um, uh, and chart the future course for the ZBA. As I say, we, we do have one issue that is potentially coming up in the next couple months. Um, it's got to go through the process, but um, we want to make sure we've got a ZBA that's uh, viable and constituted appropriately so that we can uh, deal with that issue. Next item is uh, got a couple residents that are interested in uh, installing an agricultural well on their property in the village. Um, I am not finding anything in the code of ordinances or the zoning ordinance. I guess I'll take a look at the Enabling Act of 2006 as well uh, to see if it pre prevents them from going forward and doing that. Now, I've had a conversation with both of them. As soon as they connect any part of an agricultural well with the distribution system, which starts in their house, um, they will be metered and, and uh, fall under the normal process that we have as part of our code of ordinances. But um, again, right, I continue to look, uh, probably involve Jeff a little bit, maybe he's aware of something I'm not, but I'm not finding anything that prohibits the installation if they want to spend the money uh, to put in an agricultural well for watering flowers, watering grass, they don't have to pay for water if they do that. I don't. If they're pulling it out of the ground and they're not connected to the distribution system, there's nothing that says they do. I have a question, Rob. I didn't think you could put a well in there. Yeah, we don't know if, where if somebody it. knows of something, just like the Enabling yeah. Act, that I don't yeah. know, please point me at it because I'm not seeing it. I think it may be on okay. the like when I made about those three week code, that was a big deal because the two that did actually ended up getting fined and ticketed for doing it. Mm -hmm. On top of yeah, the fact that, yeah, because you can tell which ones because it, it rusts. Rust every day. Yeah, so when your concrete is all rusted, you know who it is. Right. Well, yeah, help, help me find it if you can. Yeah, maybe because that was a, P a PUD, though. Right. I mean, there may be extenuating circumstances for that. Yeah. I, I continue to look. I don't know that it's imminent, mm -hmm. but. I see you trying to find something. He's, uh, he's got a, he got Yeah, as a water professional, Ross, what yeah. provisions have they got in for cross connection prevention? Because if their pressure exceeds what that is, their you know the agricultural water can go right back out in the system. Um, That's a witch's brew. If if they're just drawn from a pump and and spraying a garden, I, I don't know, I don't know that that is an issue. Cross connections are an issue. Again, if they Connect in any way, shape, or form to the, the whole. to the house, so which ergo is then connected to the distribution yeah, right. system. Yeah. The meters. A lot of them connect to the creeks. 
So what one, one of the individuals has contacted the Macomb County Health Department about it. They don't really have a prohibition against it. So, I mean, so we okay. continue to look. Um, just want to let council know that uh, this is um, uh, uh, something coming out of left field that I don't think we had expected. But uh, well, I I'm not to talk anything to Terry Rooney. So. He was the water commissioner at the time mm -hmm. that DEQ gave us a directive that we could not tap into the aquifer any further. So there was there was a stay put on by the health department. Yeah. Terry may know who we talked to. Um, Haven't had a chance to talk to Eagle about it, but they're on the list. It's just um, okay. so I continue to do the research. Um, cross connection and backflow uh, prevention and update. Um, <coughs> uh, we had a series of. Uh, initial inspections today we've got another set coming up on the 18th of October and then the final set of inspections on our non-residential taps will be in February um, as you might recall the the contract is good through the end of July of 2022 uh, we inspect expect to have everything inspected um, uh, I really need to take the information I got and, and get it to council in the form of uh, a couple of charts. Um, it's going to be going to be too tough to try to talk it um, at this point. But uh, we do have a couple uh, businesses that have not responded um, after three or four communications from HydroCorp, which is doing the work for us. Uh, the the penalty of that is at, at some point we have to shut off their water. So. Uh, I'm planning to go talk to these three entities and see are, are you getting the notices from HydroCorp? Do you have a particular problem with letting somebody in? What's what's the issue? So, um, we'll give a, a more in-depth update at the next meeting. Um, Kathy talked about heart and soul. Um, so I spent quite a bit of time this last uh, couple weeks uh, trying to finalize the water samples uh, that we have to pull as part of Eagle's yearly sampling plan. We had one inspectable area that kind of got away from us in the transition of DPW supervisors and bringing on f and to, to do water in addition to the wastewater. So um, uh, I, think we're, I think we will be in good shape. We have to have the samples collected by the end of this month, which is um, Wednesday, I believe, of next week. Uh, we've got all the sample bottles out. Uh, we expect to get them back tomorrow, and uh, which will uh, clear us from an eagle perspective on the sampling. And then there's the analysis of the samples, which is, which is another thing, but I don't believe that's going to be a problem. So, um, spent a lot of time doing that, but I think we're in good shape. And then finally, um, the last couple meetings we had discussed that uh, Ford County uh, had some money uh, available through uh, <coughs> part of the 9-11 National Service Day. Um, I was going to bring back to council uh, some ideas as to how to best use that money as part of a community appreciation event for uh, the response to the tornado. Uh, uh, I've got six or seven ideas I want to explore with you. I got to put it on a piece of paper, but all of the water stuff has precluded me from getting that together. So I will bring that to council on the, uh, what is the 11th of October, the next meeting. And uh, one, of the, one of the parts of that is you need to use some of the money for something tangible. Uh, I've talked a little bit with uh, Chief Patrick about it. He uh, is supportive of a community bulletin board, um, non-electronic, it's just something that you post emergency notifications on just like um, uh, when you would do with a tornado <laughs> and uh, the electric grid's down and you can't get internet messages and so where do you go to find this information? Um, so he is, um, he is interested in that and, uh, and I share his interest. So that may be something that we're able to do. Uh, Kathy, any comments on that? or? Uh, no, I, I just said the money's, uh, money's I, available. It is. Uh, however, I, I hadn't had time to tell you uh, <laughs> that the money had to be spent by the Michigan Service Commission this month. Oh, and I'm leaving town. So what I, what I did <laughs> do 
is I, I leveraged uh, the money to buy small trees for residents. I, I know that. Okay. Okay. However, there is some there is some money left that I think would cover a sign in a different bucket. So, okay, great. So I'd be um, I'll talk to you about that. We yep, would love to. Never want to look at gift horse in the mouth. So. That's right. If you've leveraged trees for residents, how would they go about contact? How do they get them? Well, I just bought them today, okay. so I don't have them, but I was mindful that I needed to buy them. Okay. Because, uh, the the money is, yeah. it elapsed. It was but I was thinking a, a non-profit could, you know, uh, help uh, okay. administer, have uh, local residents pick them up, somebody who would kind of know, uh, you know, local people. So I don't have that part figured out. Okay. Uh, the trees haven't been dug, and they won't be until I have that in place. So if you have ideas about that, then they're they're relatively, they're bigger trees. They're not mm -hmm. tiny little saplings. Right. So there's not 500 of them. Okay. But, uh, you know, so definitely reach out if you have some idea of how to work to straight that. Okay, well, and if you do find a nonprofit, can you let me know so I can put that on the website so yeah. people can, Absolutely. you know, know where to get them? Absolutely. Okay. okay. And Kathy, I'll, I'll right. see if I can help out. Sure. Okay. okay. And did, is that part of any of the, the donated money? Is no. There, no? No, this is the Michigan Service Commission. Okay. And so uh, I am affiliated with them through other projects. Okay. And they had $1,000 grants available for HERO projects nice. or 9 11 type service projects. And I just said off the cuff, Armada just had a tornado. Could we leverage a thousand for them? And they nice. said yes. So yeah, that's where that came from. All that information is helpful that way, yeah. you know, people understand where it's yeah. coming from. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. okay. All right. That's that's all I have. Thank you. All right. So uh, Mr. President, I do have the short. Yes, Mr. Powell. Go ahead. I received a memorandum here from Chief uh, Mike Patrick, information on a lion's donation. Uh, for information, uh, for our information, the Armada Lions, um, Greg Dietrich, called last Thursday and stated they have a $7,500 grant to the village to spend on public property projects for tornado recovery. Uh, today, Greg called Joe Dare and wanted, uh, waiting, wanting an answer on what we could spend the money on if accepted. She told him that large trees are needed for the park. Uh, we'd like to. Mike says, I'm sure the council can decide what to do with the donation if accepted. And Mike may know more details involving how the money can be spent. And that's from Mike Patrick. I'm going to give this over to Commissioner Shaw. Thank you. While uh, yes. uh, Chief also Thank mentioned uh, possibly yeah. a better generator. Yes. Um, also, the uh, one other one. I have a quotation here for a um, smart 12 traffic notification trailer, a speed trailer. At first we thought it was going to be about $10,000 and what's really nice is that it's less. So, uh, and this has and um, comes with a 12 galvanized wheel upgrade, uh, spare tire with a galvanized wheel, a 50 watt solar panel, trailer cover, and it's a Generac. Uh, cable lock, two inch ball coupler, uh, an 80 hour, 80 amp hour marine battery for extended operation. It has a whole list of things here that are included, but it comes out to where the total price is $7,268, and they call it loaded. That's what the lights on it and the <coughs> blue and white or the blue and red, whatever you want. And uh, I would like to tell Mike, go ahead and get this. Because it's in, within my realm of spend, I believe. What about that grant you are just talking about? Well, we'll see. Could you use that on that? I don't think so. I think this is from the... You need this one? Yeah. yeah. No, that's... that's uh, going to be selfish in the trees. Well, the trees and fence. So uh, I'm going to tell Mike go ahead and order this. And also, I want him to upgrade the, uh, the old one with the oscillating lights and like that, see what that's going to cost. Well, I think it's a good idea, Mr. Ballard. I think you're onto something good. Uh, we do have a lot of more speeders uh, than uh, we used to have. And so maybe this will help control, you know, uh, the traffic on most of the major streets 
Well, some side, side streets are getting it too, yes, so it's being reported, you know, to the offices and to the chief. And this is also going to have on it a, um, they call it a traffic data recorder with USB download and smart stat traffic statistics analysis and configuration software. So I guess it's going to be able to track the cars. Well, actually, some of this actual money would probably come out of the uh, salvage title. Uh, hopefully, yeah, because that's what yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah, because I mean, we have so much money. In yeah, that's right. And uh, I think it's a, well, if it's, it's tracking it, it should because it can find. Where would we people. store that? Do we store that in the garage? Here? Well, either that or it, it's been down to the sewer plant yard. So, but uh, I'd like to see it in a building. You know, the more we protect our yes. equipment, the better, Dave. You know. So. Yeah, I don't want to leave it out. But so. uh, I think it's a yeah. it's a wonderful investment, and uh, I know in some of the other communities, uh, I follow vehicles myself, and uh, pretty soon they're breaking because they see the flashing blue and red lights. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is a deterrent. So I, I think that's super, Mr. Bat. And also, the uh, he is getting the a new radar gun for the car, and he's going to have the old one fixed so that we have a spare here in case one goes down and go right, pick the other one up and send one in. Well, normally we we have the two cars that's available on the road all right. the time, and then uh, the third one uh, could be for an emergency parades or that Saturday, and so on. There's a certified officer. Uh, in the car, he could use that. Right. So exactly. it's a, it's an added tool, you know. Sure. There, there's no doubt. And uh, like I say, the speeders are going to have to stop because people are complaining <coughs> too much. Yes, sir. And so the thing is that uh, uh, I get tired of hearing it. Yeah. Dalton Street's been really bad. Yeah, and you go over here by the school in Center and Spencer. I mean. I can tell you who they are. I sit out on my porch. <coughs> I won't. I won't say which ones. You know that uh, whether man or woman or gender, in other words. Uh, but uh, the thing is, it uh, it is there. So this will be able to be moved around uh, different different streets, mm -hmm. uh, and then they'll be sitting uh, also stationary radar and. Of course, yep. the, the radar units are moving also, mm -hmm. so they can catch them moving, you know, also, going either way. Sure. So, I think it's a good buy, Mr. Cowley. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Yeah, President, oh, yeah. well, you know what, uh, you guys will all go after you. You like it a little bit, do um, I apologize for my AV unit. Not working. Uh, it worked this morning, but uh, it probably got too close to one of the computers at the water plant uh, that has been giving us some problems. Um, the last week they removed the last barrier to the number two tank and they started tearing down the piping and everything. Uh, there will be pictures in a printed report uh, for all this, um, you know, for the whole project. Uh, so the project's back on track from where it was. Um, there was testing done on number two with all the new units in there. All the air testing went well. Everything was sealed. No other things had to be done except they pulled the ladder out and we started to fill the unit. And then um, today they tore out all of the old air piping so we are uh, locked into uh, two SBRs. Uh, tomorrow they start cleaning the third SBR. Uh, we've been operating um, except for one little nuisance alarm. Uh, we've been operating very very well. We have uh, outstanding results on our um, product going out of the plant and uh, if it keeps going the way it is, uh, there'll be uh, a reduction of chemical use 
and that'll be a reduction of, co of the cost of operations uh, in, in the whole plant. Um, uh, Doug has uh, been very supportive and uh, quickly learning the ropes and everything, so um, I'm, I'm expecting you'll see more of him in the future and less of me and uh, less of gadgets that don't work. Uh, <laughs> But uh, very, very optimistic. Uh, we really, really like the unit. Uh, the product coming out is just, uh, even though we had those floods and everything, it handled the floods. Uh, it actually doesn't like the low flows. It pr prefers a, a medium flow, um, but it handled the, the floods very, very well. Uh, the creek was up three to four feet, and uh, we had a lot of, a lot of water coming in. Um, beyond design capacity, but the new units handled it well. So we're excited about the future, uh, the less violations, less, uh, less problems, less call outs in the middle of the night, and uh, it's all good. Okay. And the bottom line will be good, right? Mm -hmm. The money. <laughs> the, you know, we're already looking at some cost potential cost savings which you know we th thought at first it was just going to come in and be a regular operation just take the just you know rebuild what was there and and continue on the operation but this thing is designed for efficiencies and uh the we found out uh last friday th uh, no last thursday that um there they're like, in a way, they're guaranteeing their efficiencies. Uh, we will be shipping them samples at the same time we're shipping samples to the laboratory, and there will be a side-by-side -side comparison, and then uh, there will be minor adjustments in the current treatment from the two units that are there now and operating well. There will be some minor adjustments to maximize the efficiency, and based on Based on uh, today, we got the phosphate results back from the last two and a half weeks, and the it went down to like 99 percent removal of the phosphates, which wow. which with all the water that was coming in, everything it's just outstanding. Um, so, if I might. also we looked at the numbers as far as. All of the loading of biochemical oxygen demand, how much oxygen is being depleted, that went down tremendously. Everything that we have is in the 90 percentile of removal. Wow. The other savings that I'm seeing is versus the old system, the blowers were running constantly. Air, everything. This is with a variable frequency drive. It, it, it monitors, okay, I've got this much dissolved oxygen. I don't need to be running that hard. It ramps itself up and down. Another say, instead of running 100% on a start, it starts slow. There, therefore, you don't have the energy cost when that thing's ramming in. So we're going to be realizing, we're projecting realizing some savings on the electrical costs also. So I was extremely pleased being a newcomer showing me the data we have as opposed to what we have. The system is working as advertised. Very good. I'm proud to hear that. Anytime we can save money, we need it. Well, you're going to save money, you know, not only in physical costs, you're on the road to saving any, any type of violation of fines that you may receive right. or be under consent orders, whatever. Yeah. If we operate this correctly, Keep an eye on it. You won't hear a peep out of the wastewater plant. Well, sounds good so far, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that is complete, then, gentlemen. Yes, it is. Okay, Chris, Hi. please. Thank you. Uh, a few things. Uh, the uh, 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 high school had to do some Halloween decoration, uh, decorating that was kind of on the pole. Sorry about that. Um, so we talked about with the principal, new principal, and uh, uh, Dave's support will be there basically is the hail of the drops, the electrical drops. So that'd be good. Uh, Mr. Uh, I can't this open because I keep forgetting how to pronounce his last name, Tandesky, 
the tree guy, as he called himself, is going to be texting. We've been in contact with each other. Um, we are going to revisit the varieties that he's proposing. Um, as you get a chance to see some of the site locations, some of those trees are just not compatible with, with the overhead lines around. Um, and besides, we weren't that fond of the sycamore anyway. So, um, and then the almond and that maple are just going to get too big. So uh, he is prepared for that for us for next spring. Uh, you know, we're looking at 100 uh, to plant. Uh, then segue into Joe. How did the how did you make out this weekend? Then? It was awesome. We had give or take a few heads, 70 volunteers that showed up. Great. Not only just from Armada, surrounding communities as far as Sterling Heights, Macomb, Richmond, Memphis, and Detroit. 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 Yeah, right. yeah. Detroit. Um, they they were very enthusiastic. It was heartwarming, and they all all just wanted to help our mate. He planted 44 very nice trees wow. in the west end of the damage yeah. from the tornado uh, in phase one, which was Saturday, and then we also planted the 10 trees, helped plant them in the township park. Um, and our volunteers ranged from five years old to 85 years old. And the little guy came with his little shovel, it was so cute. He just, <laughs> he just wanted to help. Um, and this was through the DTE Foundation, um, Green Macomb Initiative. And then on October 7th, we have another, the second phase two of the planting. And that will be on the east end of town. Um, in We'll be filling in some trees there that came from Second Nature Foods. Oh, and okay. those are probably, I think, going to be a little bigger. We'll have 50 of those coming. So I, I can't thank the DPW enough for all of the extra work and initiative that they put in to get everything prepared for us. So there was a lot of work to this between the scoping of, of the locations, yes. you know, then going walking through town again to stake those locations coordinate them with the species. We've got a large variety of species now instead of just mainly our meat being all maple, uh, a few sycamore. But uh, it, it, it was very successful. I was very, very enthused that uh, you know, we would get the job done. We did, we got it done early and everybody had pizza and it was, it was an awesome day. I, it was very, very heartwarming. So. As soon as we got done, the rain stopped. The rain stopped. Yeah, it was right. about time we got done, exactly. So I'm hoping that all of those volunteers and some more volunteers will come for to help on the 7th. So just be at uh, Lutheran Church, 9 o'clock, and we'll do it again. I'm waiting for the water, water ongoing watering quote. Yes, we are. Uh, so I, I told them the idea was to start October 4th, like the first week to go right. through, but uh, I did not see that quote yet. Yeah, currently we're doing it with buckets and it's yeah. a long, mm -hmm. slow process, yeah. pretty labor intense. Did those water sleeves actually show up or not yet? No, not yet. Yeah. No. <clears throat> so hopefully we'll see everybody again on the 7th, mm -hmm. 9 o'clock. Very good. Thanks, thanks, Joe, for your report. Um, <coughs> And uh, did you have something with the CPW report to besides? Or uh, not that it isn't already there, but it's for all, all to read, not that they're being unique or move forward in it. Okay, very good. We still got, uh, yeah, I mean, the normal stuff, which Dave doesn't get into as much as he could. And we've got uh, plenty of tree trimming, you know, for the you know, loose branches that have been fallen. Uh, trying to keep up on that. You know, later on, as we get into new business, I'll have the other part of that report. That's what I say. I'll wait till that. Dude, we've had so much wind, that's why some of the branches are still falling. Oh, yeah. And uh, I know it's hard to keep up. So, but uh, uh, I see that they are out there and uh, religiously on uh, Thursday or Friday for sure. Yep. <coughs> uh, anything else in the administrative report, Mr. Sure. Okay. We'll go on to general business. Oh, may oh I, yes, sir. Maybe I, may I be excused? Yes. yes. <laughs> no, you have to sit here through all of this. <laughs> the whole thing. I'm going to go. I think with your oh, good, bail out. Your good <laughs> report would save I'm going to bury this. I'm going to go bury this thing. All right. Work, so. <laughs> have a good one. Save all right. your ball. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks for coming. Thank you. Take care. Okay, general business. Uh, Senator Jenner, please. Uh, here will the regular council meeting minutes of uh, September 13th. Payment of bills. Special event permit application for the Knights of Columbus for Four Corners Foundation uh, fundraiser. What is council's wishes, please? Mr. President, I'll move the consent agenda be accepted as presented. Support. Mike, shall I? Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Old business. Similar plant. Mr. Clark is not here tonight. Yeah? So, uh, anything further on the water, Mr. No, Ralphie? Unless, unless there's any questions. Uh, all right. We'll pass on then. Thank you. You might as well just move the water department update to administrative reports. So we don't have to write it down voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. We were doing that as part of the uh, DPW supervisor change out and so on. So it, maybe it's out uses usefulness. Okay, then, usefulness. Next, next is the good report from Mr. Uh, McBride and his associate. Hey, hey right. Um, it's such a pleasure to see him here. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, and you may want to be aware about the yeah, go that way. About to get the bright lights. Oh, so give me <laughs> <that's right. laughs> putting the money right on your head. Well, Good evening, Bill President, uh, Council. Uh, my name is Curtis McBride. I'm a CPA for McBride Manley and Company. We are the firm that audits the, vill the village's financial statements. Um, I've been with the firm for 21 years. I'm our firm's managing partner. I'm also our firm's uh, governmental accounting and auditing director. Um, with me this evening is Amy. Um, she's been with our firm for 14 years, um, and she is the audit manager uh, for the village of Armada, so she's instrumental uh, with our audit. And of course, we bring other staff um, throughout the course of our audit. And we are here this evening to present the results of our March 31st, 2021 audit. Um, now, before I get into the actual slides, which you should all have a physical copy of, if you want to follow along that way, sometimes it's hard to see up on the screen. Uh, but the first thing I actually want to talk about is the financial statement itself. So that's the, uh, there, there's, a, there's a black bound document that says audited financial statements. I want to talk specifically about our audit opinion. Um, and that, that's actually the most important part of, the, of, that, uh, of that bound document. Um, there are three types of opinions you can receive from your auditor. So there's what we call a clean or unmodified audit opinion, which, we, which means we believe your financial statements are fairly stated and they're in compliance with our professional standards. And then the second type of opinion is what we call a modified opinion which means that for the most part, we feel like they're in compliance with our standards, but there may be a few exceptions. And then the third type of opinion is what we call an adverse audit opinion, which means we do not believe the financial statements are reliable and they're not in compliance with our standards. So I am pleased to announce that for March 31st, 2021, the village received a clean or unmodified audit opinion from our firm. So that's the best opinion you can receive from your auditor. Now, just to clarify, that's just an opinion on the accuracy of the financial records. The focus of our audit is not to provide an opinion on the financial health of the village. That's not what we focus on. Um, so now, I'll move into the slides. Um, the first fund I want to talk about briefly is the general fund. Now, the general fund primarily derives its revenues from property taxes, state shared revenues, and then some federal, state, and local grants. So here we're looking at the balance sheet for the general fund. You can see the general fund had about uh, $1.4 million of total assets on hand at the end of the year. Uh, most of that was in the form of cash. Uh, you can see you had obligations or liabilities against those assets of about $129,000 at the end of the year and finished the year with an ending fund balance level of about $1,272,000. I'll talk about the fund balance level in a little bit more detail on my next slide. Now on this slide, we're looking at the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance for the general fund. 
the income statement, if you will, during the year. So you can see the general fund generated about $884,000 or $885,000 of total revenues during the year. $387,000 was from property taxes. You can see it generated another $187,000 uh, in distributions from the state of Michigan. That's your state revenue sharing uh, during the year. And then you can see the other major revenue category is what we call special assessment. So that's your PA33 uh, special assessment revenues, you generate about $95,000 of that during the year. You can see that you spent about $638,000 during the year. You actually had a net change or an increase in your fund balance level of about $246,000 during 2021. And as I mentioned in my previous slide, uh, you finished the year with an ending fund balance level of about $1,272,000. Now, to put that into perspective, the State of Michigan Department of Treasury recommends that at a minimum, now this is minimum recommendation, that your fund balance level be at about 10% of annual expenditures. Now, we are a little bit more conservative than that, and especially when you consider the size of the village, you know, a smaller municipality, 10% would only leave you with about $63,000 of fund balance. In my opinion, that's not it's not going to work. You know, that doesn't give you enough in reserves to plan for any, um, you know, emergency expenditures that may arise. So really for someone like the Village of Armada, I would say your minimum is probably closer to 20%, and that's minimal. So what that means is really you shouldn't, you should make sure it, you know, if, if you're at that 20% threshold, you really should, should be taking measures, you know, to build it back up. Mm -hmm. Now, there, to put it into perspective, at $1,272,000, you can see that's actually more than your annual expenditures in, 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 a, in your fiscal year. So you have a healthy fund balance level in your general fund. Now, what's interesting about this is the Michigan Department of Treasury actually did a, I'll call it a study, and they took the averages of all communities, their fund balance levels, for 2019. And they determined averages for villages, cities, townships. Um, and what they found is that for villages, the average, um, in, for 2019 at least, was 81% of annual expenditures. That was for 2019. Now, if we go back to 2019 for the Village of Armada, you were at about 100%. So you, you, were, you were above the 81% average. Um, so that's the most current data that's out there when you look at averages um, for villages throughout the state of Michigan. So you guys do exceed the, the average um, uh, for villages throughout the state of Michigan. Now on this next slide, we're looking at sources of revenue specifically for the general fund, uh, comparing 2020 to 2021. You can see you actually generated about $910,000 of total revenues in 2020, and, you can, and that came down to about $885,000 for 2021. You can see property taxes have pretty much leveled off. You can see it generated about $388,000 from property taxes in 20 and about $387,000 in 2021. You can see state, sh state shared revenues also went down slightly from $192,000 to $187,000. And then one of the big changes is your special, your special assessment revenue, which is the PA33. You generated about $110,000 for that in 2020 and that came down to $96,000 in 2021, and that's because you reduced uh, the millage rate for the, for the PA33 during the 2021 year. So that explains why that, why that decreased. Um, and you can see in a typical year, your property taxes make up about 43% of your revenues, your state shared revenues make up about 21%. So those two really make up the, the primary sources of revenue in your general fund. Moving on to the next slide, which is the, now I apologize, it's, it's cut off by the design, but you guys have it sitting in front of you. This is the general fund revenue uh, expenditures by type, again, comparing 2020 to 2021. Um, you can see you spent about $610,000 during 2020 for your general fund, and about $638,000 in 2021. You can see that a large portion of your expenditures are in the form of wages, benefits and payroll taxes. So you spent about $433,000 on that during 21, or roughly 67 or 68% of your annual budget. And that would make sense. You know, obviously the, um, 
to run the village, it's labor intensive, so you would expect that you know the, the majority of your expenditures would be in payroll and other related costs. Um, you can see, just uh, pointing out one major change, I guess, between the two years, you can see maintenance, if you can read across there, uh, was about $15,000 in 2020, and it went up to about $44,000 in 2021. That's because you did have um, some significant uh, uh, costs for backhoe repairs in the DPW. Right. That happened during your March uh, 31, 2021 budget year. So that, that was one of the major differences between the two years. Now the next three funds I want to talk about briefly are the street funds. Now these funds are quite a bit different than, than the general fund uh, in that their fund balance levels or reserves are restricted. And they're restricted for uh, the maintenance and construction of streets throughout the village. In other words, you can't take uh, major local or municipal street funds and in, in, uh, use it for general operating expenditures. They have to be used for streets. Um, now the major local street funds derive their revenues from, uh, re from uh, revenues from the Michigan Department of Transportation Act 51 fund. So you receive distributions from the state. And then the municipal street fund primarily derives its revenues from property taxes. So you have a property tax millage for streets and that's your municipal street fund. So here we're looking at the balance sheet for these funds, starting with the local street fund. You can see you had about fifty-three dollars or $54,000 of total assets on hand at the end of the year. Total liabilities against those assets of about one, uh, not $1,306, a uh, little bit of a difference there, um, to end the year with a total fund balance of about fifty-two dollars or $53,000. Moving over to the major street fund in the center column here, you can see you had total assets on hand of about $106,000 at the end of the year had total liabilities and obligations against those assets of about $26,000 and finished the year with an ending fund balance level of about $80,000. Moving over to Municipal Street on the far right, you can see you had total assets on hand of about $596,000. You had total liabilities against those assets of about $9,500 to finish the year with an ending fund balance of about $586,000. The next slide is the income statement for these three funds. Again, starting with the local street fund uh, in, the, in the left column. You can see you generated about forty-eight or $49,000 of revenues. Again, primarily those are uh, distributions from the state of Michigan from MDOT. You can see you spent about $87,000 during the year, so you actually used up about thirty-eight dollars or $39,000 of your fund balance level over in local streets, which left you with an ending fund balance level of about fifty-two or fifty-three thousand dollars. Now, there really is no recommended fund balance level for these three funds. Um, you know, the, the the important thing is that you use the reserves for for, for street improvements. And if you, your fund balance levels get low, you really need to take measures to build those fund balances up before you commit to street projects. Now, the one thing that you guys do have uh, that's good is your municipal street fund. So. The key is your municipal street fund can always help with major local streets in the event that your um, your MDOT revenues or your Act 51 revenues are not sufficient to help with street projects. You do have the municipal street fund available to subsidize those projects. Um, now, I wouldn't call it a, a, a major uh, expenditure, but one thing you did you see you have capital outlay here in local streets of about fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars. You had some crack seal work done during the yes. March 31st, 2021. Uh, budget year, that's what that is. Uh, moving over to major streets, you can see it generated about $132,000 of revenues. You spent about $89,000 uh, during the year, had a net increase to your fund balance level of about $42,000, and ended the year with about a $79,000 or $80,000 fund balance level. Um, over major streets, the, the capital outlay, if you will, was that those were, I guess I would call it the, the finishing touches on the West Main Street uh, project occurred in the March 31st, 2021 <coughs> budget year. And then Municipal Street, you can see it generated about $154,000 of revenues during the year, primarily from property taxes. And you can see you spent about $44,000 during the year and ended the year with an ended fund balance level of about $586,000. Now in my opinion, for all three of these funds, you have sufficient fund balance levels. Your local street fund is about 60% of annual expenditures, so good shape there. Um, your, your major street fund was about 89% of annual expenditures, and then municipal streets was, was actually more than um, annual expenditures in the fund. 
uh, getting down to the last few slides here. I have a couple slides that are uh, trend analysis. Uh, here we're looking at property tax revenues uh, going back to 2016. So here we're looking at your general operating tax uh, taxes and your municipal street millage. So you can see in 2016 you generated about uh, $477,000 in property tax revenues. You can see that number jumped up over $500,000 in 2019 and you generated about $541,000 for 2021. So you can see even though um, when you compare 2021 to 2016, you've had about a $63,000 increase in property taxes. I, I just want to make a couple points clear. Number one, it's not because property tax rates have gone up. It's because the assessments, the, the taxable values of properties within the village have gone up since 2016. And the interesting thing about this is if we took this back even further, and this, would, this surprises a lot of people, mm -hmm. If you look at the property taxes that were generated in the village in 2009, for instance, um, the village generated about $594,000 of property tax revenues in 2009. So you can see, even though you see an upward, an upward trend here in property tax revenues, you still generated $53,000 less in property tax revenues in 2021 than you did back in 2009. Now we'll get into the, the, the gory details of why that is, but. It's primarily because of the limitations that are placed on property taxes. So you have uh, Proposal A, um, which limits uh, the taxable value growth in individual properties within the village. And um, you know there's some exceptions to that with uncapping when there are property sales. But then you also have the Headley Amendment, which comes in and limits the growth for the village a a as a whole. So what happened, unfortunately, in 2009 and 2010 is we had a, a housing market uh, problem, a depression in the, in, the, uh, in the market. So what happened is property values declined drastically in a very short period of time. So the, uh, the taxable values followed suit. And so um, because of those limitations I just uh, talked about, it's taking the village a long time to, to restore those taxable values. And that's why you're generating less in property tax revenues now than you were back in 2009. Now the next uh, trend slide I want to talk about is the general fund balance trend going back to 2017. You can see in 2017 your fund balance level was at $314,000. Um, you can see you've had a steady increase um, in 2019 uh, that, that your fund balance level is about $726,000 and for 2021 um, as I mentioned your ending fund balance level was about $1,272,000. So, um, a positive trend uh, going back uh, 2017 uh, compared to 2021. Now, the last slide I want to talk about briefly is the statement and position for the water and sewer fund. Now, these funds are different than the, than the general fund and the street funds in that these are what we refer to as proprietary or enterprise funds. Um, we call them enterprise funds because they're accounted for more like a private for-profit business. That's because theoretically they're supposed to be self-sustaining. In other words, the, the village owns the water and sewer plants and charges the village user, you know, the, the village residents for use of, of, the, of the plants. Um, here, looking at the sewer fund, you can see that total assets of about six million four hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars at the end of the year. But you can see the majority of that is in a category under non-current assets, right? So the majority of those assets are tied up in what we call non-current assets which you know would be the actual sewer plant the lines and all the major equipment associated with the plant in other words those are not assets that are it's not cash and they're not assets that are easily converted into cash so they're not liquid assets right. um, and you can see the total obligations or liabilities against those assets of about three million five hundred fifty five thousand dollars during the year or a total uh, ending net position of about two million nine hundred forty two thousand dollars um, but again, a significant portion of that is tied up into those non-current assets. Um, one thing to be aware of um, in the sewer fund, um, the, there's a new bond out there that you didn't see in last year's financial statement. So obviously that's the construction of the sewer plant and the balance of that bond at the end of March 31st was $3,095,000. And uh, that is scheduled to be paid off in 2042. So that's the maturity date of that bond. Um, moving over to the water fund, 
you can see a total assets of about $3,985,000. Again, a large portion of that is tied up in those non-current assets. That's the sewer plant itself, the major lines, the equipment. Um, you had total liabilities against those assets of about $711,000 and finished the year with an ending net position of about $3,274,000. But again, a large chunk of that's tied up into the, into the plant itself. It's not cash. Um, you do have a bond outstanding in a water fund. At the end of March 31st, it was about $699,000. And the good news is that matures in 2024. So it's coming off the, the debt list soon. Um, that's all I have for the funds. I do want to talk very briefly. <laughs> you notice you have a second bound document uh, in, in, in your, you're sitting in front of you that you normally don't have everything. That's because we, we basically had to do a second audit, which is what we call a single audit or a special audit. Um, and that's because of your sewer project. So any time you spend more than $750,000 in federal funds, you're required to have a single audit. So basically what the single audit involves is, in, in, in the case of this project, it's ensuring that the funds are spent for the intended use of the program. In other words, if, it, if it's for construction of the sewer plant, you know, you're not spending it on, an extreme example would be general operations in the village. Um, so, so, so really that, that's basically the idea of that audit. Um, and as a result of that audit, um, the village did have one finding that is unique this year that, that, was, that was not there in the past. Anytime you um, get involved in federal programs, you are required to document, uh, you're supposed to have written policies and procedures for administering and, and monitoring federal grant monies. And currently the village does not have a written plan. Um, so that's automatically an audit finding. Um, that, that has to be disclosed as a result of our audit. So, um, you know, I met with um, with Joe, Michelle, and Becky last week, and I know that they're currently in the process of, of putting together a, a written plan um, so that uh, next year it's anticipated that we will also have a single audit related to the program because obviously the, the village is going to spend more than $750,000 in federal funds related to that program for the 22 23. Um, here. So that's all I have. Very good. Any questions? Well, Mr. McBride, it's been another good pleasure year for us and having you and your company with us. Thank you. We, we definitely yeah. appreciate that. Uh, there's probably three of us or four of us that uh, go way back to the company and when your honorable father was here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the same good, <coughs> which I like tremendously. Thank you. And I think Joe also. Absolutely. I think we have an awesome audit firm we, we, working for us. And I mean working for us. If we need them, they are there at our back and call. So. Anytime we have an issue, a question, need a resolution to something, we get an answer right away. I, I just so appreciate them. And how long have you worked with the auditors? Mm -hmm. 20, 27 years? 27 years. Yeah, when Glenn was here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they were here longer than that. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. yeah. They yeah. Was. yeah. Well, it seems they like they were always as long as I've been here. Well, wow. dad, your that dad was, was here. I want, I want to say 76, 75. Then you were the new kid. My dad's, I wasn't born yet. Yeah, you were, <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you came in as the new kid on the block. I, 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 I've been involved with this audit since my first day, which was in, which would have been in May of 2000. So 21 years for me personally. But, uh, but I believe my dad's first year would have been 1975. Wow, crazy. And I can recall being employed here all these years, and of course David being the grandfather of the council. <laughs> I don't think I was quite on the council. So so, but, uh, no. <laughs> but he was here for a long time too, so uh, he has heard a lot. Of course, Mr. Ballard, he, you know, being around. So the other gentlemen, I wish you well to stay as long as they do, yeah. or as long as they did. So. Thank you, Curtis. Curtis, thank you again. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Yes. Uh, every year we 
decide that we're going to take the heavy override. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel that. The, he the Headley override? Yes. In other words, we always, you know, I guess it's the, we invoke the Headley. Mm -hmm. And the roll back. We roll back, right? The roll back. Right. Yes. Right. Um, how, do you feel that that does us any good? I mean, other than politically? So, so well, I guess it's, a two, it's almost a two-sided question. So, yeah. the, head, the Headley rollback is something that's required under the Headley Amendment. Mm -hmm. So, there's this idea. Um, I, I believe there is a there is the option to do what they call a Headley override vote. Um, but, but my understanding is so. Basically, what it is is you have the Headley rollback, which now Headley basically, and in, 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 I'm trying to summarize this the best I can. It limits property tax growth within the village as a whole. In other words, I'm just going to use an example. If, if, it just, if it so happens that all the taxable values within the village combined ends up growing 15% in one year compared to the next, Headley over, the, the Headley <coughs> comes in and says, well, no, you can't do that. It's only going to be, it's going to be the, the lesser of, I believe it's 5% or the cost of living, whatever it might be. I believe the village has the option of doing a head, Headley override um, but my understanding is, and we have to confirm with the village attorney, is I believe that has to go to a, to a vote of the yeah, people. Yeah, public hearing. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it would have to actually go, it would have to be voted on by the, the residents of, of the village. You have to pass a vote. So we, we couldn't just have like a truth and taxation hearing? Okay, that's you my understanding. You don't have a truth and taxation hearing you know? with Headley. Correct. Okay. Well, Headley was voted in by, by right. residents. I think yeah. it has to be voted out by yeah. residents. Yeah, yeah, so the, I believe the residents have to would yeah. have to pass a vote. Would have to pass a vote to do it over, to override the head of the amendment. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's, yeah. yeah, that was my question. Thank That's you. Right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you for <laughs> that <out. laughs> That's blinding. Our show is getting Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, have to go with the uh, large report with the uh, uh, motion here. You have two. So. Yeah, there's two there. So, uh, what does the council wish? Mr. Mr. President, I resolve to accept the audit for the fiscal year ending March 31, 2021, and to place on file. Second. Been moved and supported by Ballard and Gone uh, to accept the uh, audit as such, as presented. Uh, <coughs> does the council have any uh, further discussion? If not, uh, make a roll call. I don't usually do one. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Mr. President, I resolve to accept the single audit for the fiscal year ending March 31, 2021, and to place that on file. Support. By Shaw, Valerie and Shaw. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And again, thanks, Mr. Gray <laughs> and Amy. Uh, next, uh, Chris, you have uh, some damage sidewalk faults as such? I am just an uh, FYI. I've uh, got one in the process and I've got to come up with uh, a couple other ones yet. So, right now, the only player on the table doing the quoting is D&E. Uh, we'll look for a couple other sources as well. So, uh, we've identified, the Chiefs identified 61 flags. Uh, we'll revisit it one more time just to make sure there are, you know, no, there were no new findings based on some of the uh, removal of stumps and trees and whatnot that did add to the mix. So. Is it likely that we'll get some funding for that? From this county money or state money? It's already been closed. It's closed. It's already it's spent, spent, probably. Yeah. Well, it's not spent, it's already applied for. But it's applied oh, for. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Was that included? It was. was yes, it was. Yeah, okay. yeah, they okay. call that John Fleet. I was trying to look at the phrase. There was something about being forward because we, we weren't going to spend it this year and we'll be actually spent next year. Yeah. So, 
like so, the way the phrase you used, but I forgot what it was. So you, the, the future planning was part of the consideration. So. You think you'll have that for our next meeting, maybe possibly, Greg? Uh, I'm hoping so. They'll let me know. So I will let you know the show. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you for all your hard work on that, Jim. Oh, thanks. It's uh, so. Uh, Up and, coming, up and coming agenda items. Council have any? What were your yeah, two, Russ? Bring back the um, uh, recommendations for the, uh, what do we call it? The, um, uh, the, in, uh, in fact, I don't even know if we can do that now. Because uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Kathy said that the money oh, had the to be spent. Oh, the money's already, yeah, sure, he did that one. Yeah, yeah. so that may be a moot point. Okay. Uh, uh, I will pursue some additional money though. Uh, Chief, as I say, was pretty interested in some kind of emergency notification bulletin board for residents to come and see. So I'll keep, keep uh, talking to her about that. Um, and the other issue was the cross-connection and backflow prevention status update. Uh, we've got some charts and I've got to go through them. Um, Give you an idea of what we've got done to date, who's in compliance, who's not in compliance. Um, about we'll the media, about we need that media, um, you know, our part in that media. Um, uh, that's pretty much a beta complete. They're moving forward with that, they've got the money in hand, uh, so now it's just monitoring the production of it and the delivery. And uh, we're going to have a just a discussion probably towards the end of October to plan the exchange. There's some logistics involved. So. I don't understand what you mean by the exchange. Well, they're going to they're, they're going to bring all of the media that's got to go into the waste the water treatment plant vessels, stage it someplace. If I'm going to do one vessel at a time instead of two vessels. There's a there's a process. We want to make sure we understand. Is that three hundred thousand Canadian funds or American funds? It's a Canadian company. Well, there's yeah. a, part of the part of the reason for the cost is the conversion to from U.S. to Canadian dollars and so on, and, the, and they probably increase the rate because the uh, the exchange rate is lower for Canada, so they probably upped it to make sure they got U.S. dollars worth, not Canadian dollars worth. So. Uh, Okay, well, I would like to expand a little bit on something that Lyle touched on that we'll be bringing back, and that was the grant from the Lions Club. They called me on Friday and talked to me about it. They also called Chief and talked to Chief. Uh, Chief and I have discussed it. It, it was a $75,000, so I'm sorry, 75, I wish, I wish, <laughs> $7,500 grant that uh, now the balance is 7400 There were some expenditures that were storm-related. Um, the money had to be spent for repairs or replacement of things that were directly damaged in a tornado. So I don't think the generator would, would comply. Yeah, that's all. It wasn't no. damaged or, right. or ruined in the, in the tornado. But given that we've put so many trees in the, in the street line, that money, I talked to them, that money would be greatly appreciated to buy as large trees as we can. I mean, it's, we, we won't even have to worry about getting a crew to plant them. They will have to be spade planted. Yeah. Very large trees. Yeah. I'm hoping to get four to six to, to replace the trees that went down in the park. The park has no trees. Everything is... How about North Fulton? All those are gone in the, in the right way. We can't, we can't put that big of a tree in the right way there. So these will be large trees. Giant tree. Giant tree. Huh? In front of my, I have a giant tree in front yeah. of my house. Well, I mean, it, I mean, we will have more trees that we can get the yeah, trees put everywhere so, they need to go. I, my tree is the only one left. Yeah, that's so, so. But we, like I explained at the uh, presentation and in the planting question uh, event that we had the other day, you will see yeah. trees along one. Street that looks like there's just numerous trees and not many on the other side. This time we have an opportunity to do it right. Those trees were there before we put sewer lines in, before the telephone lines and the electrical lines and the utility lines went in. This time we're being conscious of that. 
We aren't putting trees where they're going to interfere with gas lines, water lines, sewer lines, or overhead utilities. So that is the only reason that we haven't put some on some places that look bare to me as well. But we're trying well, to it's just right. the main street, you know, so that's almost always canopy, always, my whole life. We're trying our yeah. best, and if there's nothing that, on that side that interfires with it, we'll get the... Well, there's, I know there's no lines. All the lines are in nine houses. So, but, well, but, there is also trees, too, that need to be c coming down. And, and we're taking that into accord as well, that there will be some of these trees that are still standing, but pretty ravaged. So, you know, they, they probably they won't live or... That can be used for that, too, remo it, removal? We've got plenty of trees for that. No, not for the removal. This, we're, this is for the tree new replacement. Plant. New plant. New plant. So, you know, with as much enthusiasm as we've generated for the park this past 10 years or so, it's become a very great thing for in our community. Friends, families get together. They enjoy the, the concert in the park venue that we've created and hopefully we will continue to, to have for years. And it'll give us a jump start on some big trees for people to sit in the park comfortably and maybe bring back some of the beautification that the park had. So um, I will, I talked to Chief, he and I will contact the Lions Club and let them know that this was, you know, we, they needed a letter fax back to them today. So we did that and we'll check and see to make sure that, you know, we're the only ones vying for that. And I'm 99% sure that the money is going to come to us. You're bringing that back to the next I will bring meeting. it back to the okay. next next meeting to let you know exactly what, what became of it. Okay. But <coughs> very, very generous donation. Yeah. Have you had any time to look at the damaged trees, Chris? Uh, and do you have any sort of a little inkling or a plan that you... Oh, we have a plan, but yes, when we did the first run of the walk for the V Michigan, we identified a host of others. We used the the expert there from that site to identify those that, even as a, I think Joe word used the word ravage, yeah. uh, that people might think will survive, but they say won't make it. Mm -hmm. um, so we have we have been more identified, but again, looking at where that all that budget goes to, <coughs> eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars a pop. Uh, to cut down. Uh, well, and that's the the old yeah, exactly. The bigger, the more expensive. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they've been trying to. Uh, we identified. Oh God, probably another dozen. Another dozen at least. Yeah, they can come out. Yeah, or will come out. And then uh, uh, getting our guys on the back of the service again has been a little challenging between Reinhardt and uh, uh, we got to go back to Cap it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To do some well, work for us. some of that I've seen. Are pretty well oh, deteriorated yeah. or plain rotten, and I'm afraid, you know, these are going to fall, mm -hmm. and it's going to do damage, or I don't want to see anybody injured. Of course, you know, vehicles traveling uh, every day on on some of these streets uh, makes a lot of difference. Yeah. And like Chris said, the arborists that were with us to be to that whole ordeal of going through. We walked what, four times, I think, around the village identifying trees and stuff. There were a lot of them that they said, uh, these are kind of iffy, but they really thought <coughs> spring would be the big determination because they can tell then how much more relief is generated. The more new leaf that generates, the possibility of that tree being healthier. If we get a, a lesser amount of leaves than what that size leaf should be for that trunk, we'll know that that tree's just not going to make it, so. But I'm really, I have to say, I'm really afraid that the ones I've seen, they should be coming down very sharply. Yeah, that's what I said. There, there are some that are, are pretty ravaged and probably won't make it, but and like I said, I'm not an arborist, so I'm we don't want any, to them to We don't want any injuries or you no. know, any uh, uh, fatals. That's, that's a big deal to me. No, we'll work on that, I think, too, so. All right. Uh, now it's important for citizen comments. Name for the record in three minutes. Anyone want to address council? All right, we will move on then. Any council comments? Right. Um, yeah, it's my understanding, I've heard from a couple sources now, that with the state legislature, um, 
pretty close to approving the budget, or maybe they've already approved it, um, that they're going to turn their attention to distribution of the COVID relief funds. And so we've got about 194000 that we can expect out of that. So kind of keep my ears open as to whether they're going to do the first installment. Uh, again, two installments, uh, probably about 50-50. And so hopefully that comes soon, and that'll help defer costs of... Who writes that check, uh, Joe? Yeah, just a minute. Uh, who, who, what, what determines what we get? Yeah. There was a formula. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the paperwork now. We, we, <laughs> we were doing all that right during and after the tornado, and I have to pull that paperwork again. You can't, you can't exceed a certain dollar amount. I think we're... Um, uh, and I don't recall what it is off the top of my head. So but we we did get 194. That's what was allocated. It just gets dispersed. But is it based on <laughs> what it cost us in PPE and things related to COVID? It's um, we didn't you can it, you can use it uh, distribution for water projects, sewer projects, mm -hmm. uh, broadband. That's oh, about boy. it. Okay. That's about it. So that's pretty big. If we use the yeah, water, yeah. Well, and so I just don't want to count our chickens before they hatch. Yeah. You know. So. No. Well, I mean that's that's the that's the dollar amount that I've seen that we will be allocated, and it's oh, cool. we not going to get distributed. We have letters on that or anything like that. I, writing? I do. I got. I got. I'll try to pull it for the next yeah. meeting and. Uh, but we did get. And we uh, should have some copies in, in, the, in the office. Well, I think we do have copies. I'm sure we do. Oh, that'd be good. Yes, we would. So. Um, All right. Uh, next was community events. Uh, I got something on council comments. Oh, so, oh yeah, one more time. Um, last Monday night, uh, uh, Michelle and myself, uh, I, myself re representing Marv here, we couldn't make it. Uh, went over to the um, Romeo Village Council meeting um, and uh, you know we thank them um, you know for uh, loaning their DPW people there and uh, Michelle spoke very good and very sincere from the heart at one time I thought she might start crying uh, <laughs> but uh, she did a wonderful job of uh, thanking uh, the Romeo Village Council and, and the community of Romeo uh, for their support. And we tried to throw in anybody we could from Romeo. We threw in the football team and came to be here. Yeah, they were wonderful. So anyhow, uh, Michelle really did a great job mm -hmm. on that. Well, thanks for attending uh, in my absence. Um, it's always important when our communities work together. And I'm well assured that we will do the same, that uh, communities have to work together. And uh, we will get the job done. Let's hope we don't have to. And yeah. let's, oh, definitely. <laughs> and we were so thankful, number one, like we've said before, and this would probably be, you know, as such, uh, no injuries and no fatalities at all, which was tremendous. Animals either. Well, I haven't heard of any either. That's good. No. No. Because our animals are pretty precious to us. <laughs> so, very good. Awesome. Thank you. I have one thing on the single waste hauler, Joe and I were right. This is the second we have attended. And it is moving forward. They're getting quotes now on a single uh, waste hauler for the village and the township both. You get the so I'll let you guys know is it is it what proceeds. They'll be coming up now at the October. Uh, no, no, everybody's got another meeting in October. Where, where we should get the quotes, I would think, by then, Angel. I don't know that we'll have the quotes by then, oh. but we will have some tighter guidelines. But this would be really a township project, which is a wonderful project. Uh, all of us in the township of Armada, which all of us are, right. uh, to go with the single, right. which hopefully would uh, make it much more efficient. Well, it does have its divisions. Yeah, it has to. Our maid is really, the village is the heart of the money for these contractors. Right. We're a tighter density. Bang, bang, boom. Yep. You know, left gas to get around yeah. to us. So our, our outline is a little different than the townships. 
But the whole venture, yes, is something the township came yeah. up with. Yeah. Township. What I'm saying is, it's not being handled by two government units. It right won't now. Be any, depending on what I they think it's going to be handled by just one. It can't. I'm, I'm hoping that it's just one. I, I don't believe it can. If because it's going to be under township taxes. No, not necessarily. No. Not no. necessarily. No. If if they no. can agree that it's better to leave the billing to the, the, okay. to the contractor that gets the bid. That way he handles the delinquent payments, he handles um, service calls, complaints, and the municipalities don't have to do that. Right. If they go with billing the municipality, then there's an issue with who's taking, taking out those delinquent payments or who's an overpayment. We'd be having um, another utility. Who, who right. changed changed houses, you know, the household, and now it's a new owner who was responsible from this date to that date. That should all be through the contractor, in my opinion. Uh, and we don't want to get into the garbage We don't want to get into the garbage business. business. Right, right. <laughs> so it, it'll kind of depend on, on how they come up with how it's going to be structured. Yeah. And that's part of what the next meeting will be about. Yeah. Mm. Well, as if they pick up uh, two more customers, you get this uh, fuel fee off, which irritates me because I think it's, you know, it's too much. And it, we're just paying that so much extra. And the company I see. And that company will be exclusive, so it will have. Yeah. <coughs> so I think, you your for the I think they're just going to be making more bus. money right. charging right. the fuel lot. Well, I don't see where it's necessary, especially right here in the village where it's, you know, boom, 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 house, house, house. Right, right. So, right. Well, I think ours would be um, yeah, probably a little bit cheaper. Good. Okay. Um, any community events that are further? We don't have a closed session tonight. I'm going to entertain a motion for adjourn. The time is... time is 8.33. 8.33. 8 8 yes. I move to adjourn. Support. Bye. Right. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor. Aye. 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 Hey, motion carried. Here comes that camera now.